coaching for behavioral change. I now like to share the steps in my behavioral coaching process and hopefully teach you how to use this process yourself. Now, what I love about my process of coaching, it is highly transferable. For example, GE has taught hundreds of people to use our coaching process and their results are just about as good as mine with their internal coaches. Thousands of people externally have been trained around the world to use our coaching process. And again, many of these people have fantastic results. This is a very, very transferable process. Now, I'm going to describe how I coach people. I'm going to use an example of someone who has the potential to be a CEO. In my own coaching, I either coach the CEO or I coach the future CEO. On the other hand, it doesn't really matter. This coaching process works just as well with first-line supervisors, second-line managers, works with every level of management. I'm going to give an example of how I coach people using a potential CEO and a CEO as my case study examples. Step one in the process. In my coaching, it's incredibly time efficient. Now, what are we going to be doing today? First, we're going to learn from six different studies why the most important variable for success in leadership development, coaching, and engagement is the person, not the program. Two, I'm going to share a process called the daily question process and talk about how it's going to help you become more effective. I'm going to teach you something today that takes two minutes a day and costs nothing. It's going to help you get better at almost anything. Now, some of you are a little skeptical. You're thinking, wait a minute, two minutes a day costs nothing? Going to help me get better at almost anything? That sounds too good to be true. I'll make another prediction. Half the people that start doing this will quit within two weeks. And you will not quit because it does not work. You'll quit because it does work. Everything I'm going to teach you today is going to be incredibly easy to understand. It's just incredibly difficult to do. We're going to talk about new research on something called active questions with my daughter Kelly that I'm doing. Very exciting. And then you're all going to be invited to participate in a study yourself to see does this work for you. So rather than being an abstract theory, I'm going to send anybody that wants to participate an email every day for 10 days. You'll get a chance to practice yourself and see how it works for you. And we're going to practice peer coaching. Stand up. Find one person you haven't met yet. Sit next to that person. Go. Stand up. Find a partner. A new partner. Go, 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 go. Find a partner. Create your dream with Success Television. What got you here won't get you there. Well, the reason our book has this title is pretty simple. In my coaching practice, I work with not successful people. I work with mega successful people. These are CEOs or could be CEOs of multi-billion dollar clients. You might ask, why do these people want to change? Well, they want to change because they're smart. And what they've learned is the behavior that gets us to one level is not necessarily the same behavior that's going to take us to that next level. For example, at one level, you may be a great technician, a great individual achiever, driven to achieve. At one level, maybe it's all about me. Hello, I'm Paul Michaelman, Director of Content for HarvardBusiness.org, and I am delighted to be joined today by executive coaching guru, teacher, and author Marshall Goldsmith. Marshall writes the Ask the Coach blog for HarvardBusiness.org, and his latest book is What Got You Here Won't Get You There. Marshall, thanks for joining me today. Very happy to be here. Marshall, in your Ask the Coach blog, you address questions from our readers as well as other managers you encounter about their biggest challenges on the job. And what I'd like to do today is look at a couple of questions that have recently come across the transom. Great. So here's the first. How is the role of a business leader changing? And will the qualities of a great leader be different in the future or is great leadership timeless? And the answer is both of the above. How is the role of a leader changing? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. 
Uh, my name is Evan Wittenberg. I work in the uh, leadership development group here at Google, and we are uh, very excited to have so many of you turn out today for the first of a, a new speaker series called Leading at Google. Uh, but his new book is called What Got You Here Won't Get You There. It was a Wall Street Journal number one best-selling business book, and it's how successful people like you can become even more successful. So that's all I'll say, and uh, I'll introduce Marshall Goldsmith. Now, what are we going to be talking about? Understand the classic challenges faced by successful leaders. You all are mega successful people, and your very success can make it hard for you to change. So I'm going to talk about some unique challenges of successful people. We're going to practice something today called Feed Forward. I have some good news. My session is not just a lecture. You actually have to work in my program. You're actually going to talk to each other. And by the way, everyone in the room, I'm going to warn you in advance, you're going to pick one area for personal improvement. Each one of you is going to pick one. Now, if you have absolutely nothing to improve, you're going to pretend to have something to improve to make the others feel comfortable. So everybody's going to pick something to do better. We're going to learn a proven process you can develop yourself, how to coach people, and if we have a chance, we'll talk about peer coaching. Now, let's get started. Rate yourself exercise. Well, 85% of all my clients have declared themselves to be in the top 20% of their peer group, 70% in the top 10, and 98% in the top half. The first thing you learn about successful people is successful people are delusional. <laughs> and the more successful we become, the more delusional we get. And don't feel bad about being delusional. <laughs> <laughs>